to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, sufficient sacrifice, so free given such a life. But our redemption, heaven's gates swing wide. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Church, God is good. Hallelujah. He's good just for the fact that he woke us up this morning. Hallelujah. He brought us to church this morning and sent us home and woke us up again this afternoon to come right back. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I serve a God of the breakthrough. If you're looking for a breakthrough here tonight, I serve a God that can help you break through to any situation, through any problem that you're facing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Y'all could be seated. Amen. Going to do a little something a little bit different. Uh, I'm giving Sister Wadi a break. From leading song service tonight. This is a youth takeover, so I feel that the young people are to take it over. Amen. Not saying that Sister Wadi ain't young. Amen. She's young at heart. <laughs> Amen. Y'all worship with us as we sing. Go ahead. I need a of your kingdom coming rumors of our home where well, one day we will stand before you Lord our all together beautiful reward and we will give you glory bring you honor king above all kings you deserve our heavy So now we walk in darkness, so now we see in part. Right now we're warmed by the burning flames of the fire in our hearts. You promised you would lead us to your throne. Well, we will worship you and you alone. And we will give you glory. Everything we will lift our voices with your praises, Jesus. You are our King. Though now we walk in darkness, though now we see in part, right now we're warmed by the burning flames of the fire in our hearts. You promised you would lead us to your throne. Well, we will worship you and you alone. 
and we will give you glory bring you honor king above all kings you deserve our everything we will lift our voices with your praises jesus you are our king we will give you glory 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 and we will give you glory bring you honor king above all kings you deserve our everything we will lift our voices with your praises jesus you are our king hallelujah how many tonight is is jesus your king of kings your lord of lords hallelujah he's the alpha and the omega beginning and the end the first and the last hallelujah praise god praise god y'all could be seated we're gonna ask our ushers if they would come up tonight to take up the offering hallelujah got a few announcements to get out of the way every monday night from here on out at six o'clock we'll be having youth prayer parents please encourage your young people to be here if they can amen it's important to have prayer amen even at youth days it's important to have prayer hallelujah friday september the 5th there's going to be a youth rally and lock-in in Pearland. we'll be leaving at 5 30 uh, there's a ten dollar registration for that um like I said, it's going to be till 12 o'clock in the morning. It'll be a lock-in till 12 o'clock in that morning. They're going to have a, I don't know what this is. It's called a food truck. So they'll have food trucks there, tons of giveaways, and they're going to have a basketball tournament. So anybody who thinks they have enough skills to go play, we'll, we'll get a team together and we'll, we'll win the tournament and bring all the gifts back and everything. Amen. September... Saturday, September 13th, we'll have a youth car wash again at CVS. Um, be at 9 o'clock from 9 to 1. Friday, September 19th, there's a youth rally in Katy. For all of y'all that want to go, y'all get with me on this one and the one in Pearland. We'll be leaving at 5.30 that night to go up there to Katy. Sunday, September 21st, will be another YTO service. Looking forward to that. Amen. I always look forward to the YTO, the youth takeover. Amen. I think it's important for them to, to get involved and let, so they'll know how it is to be able to lead a service and what it is to be in that ministry of leading into a service. Because it is a ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. August 29th, there's going to be a ladies' dinner. Y'all if, you get with Sister Heather. If you, y'all know what y'all need to do for that. Sell orders, get your orders in. Uh, when do y'all need the orders in? Wednesday. They need the orders in Wednesday. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Manuel, would you pray over the offering tonight? Praise God. Go ahead. I'm a little bit nervous tonight.
to be here tonight pastor asked me about a week ago to to do the service tonight and not knowing that he wasn't going to be here that he was going to be away so pray for pastor and family while they're away tonight that God return them home safely amen I love my pastor I said I love my pastor and everything that he teaches. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If y'all will turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 29 and 18. Say amen when you get there. Praise God. Proverbs 29, 18 reads, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Amen. Y'all could be seated. 
Hallelujah. Lord, we ask that you bless this service tonight, Lord, that you deliver your word. Lord, and that you just touch somebody's life here tonight, mighty God of glory, Lord. Because that's what's the most important, Lord, that somebody, Lord, finds you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Webster defines a vision as the act of seeing external objects, actual sight. In Scripture, a revelation from God, an appearance or exhibition of something supernaturally presented to the minds of the prophets, by which they were informed of future events. Such visions, such were the visions of Isaiah and Ezekiel and many more prophets. And there ought to never be an age that we come upon where there is no vision. Because there's no open vision, things fall down. Amen. When there is no open vision, the existence of God becomes denied by others, by the people. Amen. Without no vision, there's no healings. Without no vision, there's no growth. Amen. We tend to lean towards materialistic things in a materialistic world and in a materialistic age, an electronic age where we have iPads, where we have high-tech laptops, where we have iPhones where you can connect to anything and bring up anything. We tend to let ourselves get away into the materialistic things of this world. We let our vision get construed. Amen. We let our vision get blurred by this world and the materialistic things that this world has. We get caught up in the fun things of this world. We get caught up in the things that make you feel good. Amen? Because everybody likes to feel good. Nobody likes to be down. And the world knows that. And Satan knows that. And if he can make you feel good and take away your vision that God has given to you, then he's got you. Amen. We ought to have a vision of where we want this church to go. Hallelujah. We ought to have a vision that God has given to us. Because he's given each and every one of us our own vision for our lives. Hallelujah. Praise God. We don't need to allow men to deceive us with well-spoken words. Because there's those that are out there that are well-spoken Amen. They know how to speak to you and get you to follow what they want. To get you to follow their rhetoric. To follow the things that they think is important. And we can be deceived by them words. Amen. Because a well-spoken person is a well-liked person. Somebody who knows how to speak and can convince you to do anything is well-liked. Amen. Don't allow the visions of man to lead you astray from truth. When we allow the visions of the church or our visions to be manipulated by man, the vision will begin to perish. And there will be no growth physically, and there will be no growth spiritually. Amen. But when we allow God to direct us and lead us, and we pray and seek God's face, he said, my people which are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways and seek my face. Then will he hear from heaven and heal our land. And that's what our land needs today. That's what society needs today. It needs to be healed because society is going in a bad direction. It's going toward the negativity. Amen. Society is falling apart today. Hallelujah. Isaiah 6, chapter 1 says, And in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and he said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, but I am a man of unclean lips." And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Today we're dwelling in a land today of men of unclean lips. Hallelujah. But it's up to us to be able to cast the vision that the Lord wants. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, Then one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, 
which he had taken with the thongs off from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, and I like this part, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And then said I, Here I am. Send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Amen. We have been commissioned by the Lord to reach out to the world today. That is a vision that he's given to the church to reach the lost souls. Amen. Hallelujah. The question has been set before us. Who will go? Who will go out amongst us to reach the lost? Who will not be ashamed to go spread this word? Because he said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has given us a vision to reach the lost souls of this city. And not just this city, of this county. Hallelujah. Young people, just because you're young don't mean that you can't be a witness, that you cannot make a difference in this society, that you cannot make a difference in your schools. We got schools starting up tomorrow. How many are willing to go and start being the example in the schools instead of falling in to the fold with every other kid? Hallelujah. Instead of falling in with what's cool at that moment. Hallelujah. Because it's good to be cool. It's fun to be cool. It's okay to be cool, but you're a weirdo, you're strange, you're odd if you are opposite, if you start witnessing. Hallelujah. Amen. You're an oddball. You're not popular. Nobody ever said this was going to be popular. Come on. I said nobody ever said that this was going to be a popular thing. Amen. But you've got to be willing to stand out. I said, you've got to be willing to stand out, young people, and forget what everybody else is saying, and forget what everybody else is doing. Hallelujah. Most of y'all have been raised in this. Y'all know truth. Don't be ashamed of your heritage, young people. Come on, young people. I said, don't be ashamed of your heritage. Amen, amen, amen. In order for the vision that God has given this church to come to fruition, we must be willing to go out and reach, be witnesses. Hallelujah. Not by just spoken word, but how we live. I said not by just the words that we speak, but how we live by the words that we speak. Amen. Because you're watched every day. People know what you represent. It's been said many times across this pulpit. That you're watched. You're being watched. Amen. And they know what walk that you're supposed to have. When I was out in the world and doing my thing, and I'd go party and do the stuff that I was doing, I had the friends there that said, hey, you shouldn't be here. Because we know that walk that you walk. We know that heritage that you come from. Amen. We know how you were raised. And it's something when a person out in the world tells you where you need to be. I said, I don't think y'all are getting it. I said, it's something when a person out in the world and another young person out in the world tells you where you need to be because they know where you need to be. Hmm. You never know what might effect it might have on that individual. It can determine whether they're lost or if they're saved. If they come to this church or not, if they receive the Holy Ghost or not, you don't know the effect that your walk is having on them. It's easy to put on a show. I said it's easy to come into the church and put on a show and act like you're worshiping God. It's easy to put on a show within these four walls. I said it's easy to put on a show, young people, within these four walls. Because you're comfortable and you're around your family and your friends. We have to get out of our comfort zone. I said we have to learn to get out of our comfort zone. We're all guilty of it. Nobody here is perfect. If we were perfect, we'd already be in heaven. We all make our mistakes. We all battle. We all struggle. We all face things. We all go through trials. But it's not how you fall down from that trial. 
It's how you get back up. Amen. In the rodeo world, a cowboy that gets bucked off the bull, don't let that bull scare him. He goes to the next rodeo, and he gets back on that bull, and he tries to ride that bull. Amen. That's all the world and all the Satan is. Satan's just a big old bull. Amen. He's going to knock you off, but it's how you get back on. Amen. It's not how hard you fall. It's how you get back up. Amen. Young people, you say it's easy for you to worship at other places around people you don't know. I've heard it a lot of times. Brother Keith, we just don't feel like worshiping at home. We're around our friends and, and the family and the church, and they're going to make fun of us. They're going to they're gonna say something. Why are you worried about what they're saying? It should be more easier to come into your own home church and worship and pray, young people. It should be easier to give God praise and glory here in your home church. Don't worry about what others are saying. You're not doing it for you. You're doing it for the glory of God. Amen. You're doing it for your soul. You're not doing it for their soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop worrying about what others think. Stop worrying about how you're going to look. If you would just let loose. And try to and stop trying to look good and trying to make an impression for everybody to see you. Hey, man, it's not about people watching you in this church. Stop trying to look good for others. Hey, man, hallelujah. Learn to let go. Learn to let loose. Hallelujah. Don't worry about how you're feeling when you get down here. If you're praying and you feel like you're being attacked and you feel like you got to let go and you feel like you got to throw up, if you feel like you got to spit up, if you feel like you got to kick off your shoes, do it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just do it. Stop worrying about it. Hallelujah. Maybe that's the redemption that you need. Maybe that's the salvation that you need. Hallelujah. Maybe you just got to let go and just let God have his way. Amen. Praise God. You might look good on the outside, but your attitude and your spirit makes you ugly. I said you might look good on the outside, but the attitude you present makes you ugly on the inside. Hallelujah. God don't like ugly. Hallelujah. Stop worrying about how you look on the outside. Hey, man, you dress out, you, what you got? You ain't got to wear the finest suits. You ain't got to wear the finest shoes. Michael Jordan and Nike ain't going to save you. God's going to save you. Tommy Hilfiger, Polo ain't going to save you. God's going to be the one that saves you. Hey, man. Hallelujah. Praise God. Like I said earlier, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Just because I'm standing right here right now don't mean I'm perfect. I, too, have my flaws. I, too, have to go before God myself and pray. Amen. I, too, have faced the attacks of the devil. And anybody who says they don't is lying to you. The elders of the church face battles. Just because they've been in this their whole life don't mean that they don't go through things. Don't mean that they don't get down. Don't mean that they don't get depressed sometimes. Hallelujah. They, too, have battles. Just because they've walked in longer doesn't mean they're not attacked the same way. But they, too, have visions that they want to see come true. And the thing that makes them different from others is they have a prayer life. They're constantly in prayer. They're constantly seeking God. They're interceding for this church. They're interceding for this city. They're interceding for your pastor. Amen. We don't realize just how blessed we are. There are those that are being persecuted for what they believe. And if you've been under a rock tonight, if you've been under a rock this whole week, this whole last week, you would see where people are getting their heads cut off. They're being beheaded for their beliefs. Because they're a Christian and they believe in God. You don't think it's ruined just because it's happening over there. Don't mean that it can't make its way over here. Amen. And it's not just adults that are being done that way. They're doing it to children, to young people. 
to anybody that says, hey, I believe. Hey, man. You think things are hunkadory and good feeling, but young people, they're not. I say you think everything is okay, but it's not. You think you have enough time, but you don't. You just don't realize how close things are. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to get a little personal here tonight. A lot of you don't know the things y'all know, my story that I got out of church and that I did my own thing, but a lot of y'all don't really know my story. You see, I came into church, I grew up in this. Received the Holy Ghost at nine years old. I grew up as a young person in this church. I sit on the same pews that y'all sit on tonight, young people. The same pews. The exact same spots that y'all are sitting at. But I wasn't fully in church. I played church. And that's a dangerous thing, young people, when you come to church and you just play church. It's not a game. It's not, it's not a... It's not an act. It's not theater. It's not something that you play with. It's not just for show. But I did. I came and I played church. And, and, I've, and I, I affected the other young people, some of the other young people around me. There's some of them that aren't in church tonight, that aren't here in church or anywhere in church. And, and I feel that's my responsibility because... I didn't live it. I fell into the trap that all young people fall into, that everybody falls into. I fell into the trap to where I could do it and and nobody's going to be affected by it. And even though I moved off, I still battled things. I still faced things. I battled spirits. Not the good spirits either. I battled the things that the internet throw at you and y'all know what I mean. I had an addiction. And just because it wasn't drugs don't mean it's not an addiction that it can't eat away at you because it can. It could tear you up. It'll tear you up on the inside and it'll tear you up on the outside. It'll back you in a corner where you ain't got nowhere to go. And the last hope is to turn to God. See, I don't want it to have to be that y'all have to move away in order to be able to get what God has for y'all like I did. I shouldn't have had to move away to be able to get back to where I needed to be. I should have put my foot down then, and I should have just stomped on the devil's head right then. But it was that move that helped me out. When I moved, I got into with a group of guys that, man, they men are powerful. Young men that were hungry, young men that were powerful. And it was then that, I really started to see the vision that God had for me. I started seeing what God wanted for me. It was there I met my beautiful wife. One of the best things in my life. Be coming up on eight years. A lot of young couples can't say they've been married for eight years. In a year, in a history of divorce, in a, in a world of divorce... People are just getting married and and breaking it off within two years, two weeks. Because they thought they had something and they really didn't. Let me tell you about how me and my wife ended up together. 
And y'all going to laugh, probably. I prayed for a wife. I, I prayed, Lord, just send me somebody. Little did I know that my wife had done the same thing. Little did I know when my wife was younger, she had made a list of what she wanted in a husband. Y'all think that's funny. Y'all ought to try it, young ladies. Young men, you ought to try it. Make a list of what you want a godly woman to be, the godly woman that God has for you, what you want. But I was sitting in the house right next door to the church. I was renting a little place there from the church. And I was just laying there one night, and I said, Lord, if, if there's somebody for me, just show me. And my wife had had her own little vision of, of somebody that was, and all she could see was at the front of the church was somebody who was worshiping. And she had been battling because she didn't know there was two people that she had liked, and she didn't know which one God had for her. And I was sitting there that night, I, I, and I guess she had prayed that night too, and, and I was just saying, I said, Lord, just, just send me some, just let me know, just show me who is going to be, and just like that, her face just popped right there, right in front of me. And I said, oh, okay, God. So I proceeded to ask her out. Hey, man. We were, we were friends for a year. We dated for a year. We were engaged for a year. And we're going on eight years this October. So don't tell me that God can't answer your prayers, young people. Amen. You see, I have a vision. I have a vision for this youth. And that vision is a 2020 eyesight vision. My vision is that there's no reason why this youth group can't be running 20 to 60 people. There's no reason why we can't be taking up this middle aisle and scooting everybody over to the side. Amen? You all have your friends, but you have to reach them. You have to be a witness. I said it earlier, you've got to let your walk be a witness to those friends, young people. You have to live a godly life. Because the world's going to throw everything they can at you. They're going to try to trip you up. Amen. You have to live a, lot, a godly lifestyle in front of them. You can't just tell them what you represent. You've got to live it. You can't look like the world. Amen. You can't come in here and look like the church and go out there and look like the world. You might be fooling your parents, you might be fooling others, and your friends and family here, but you're not fooling those out there because they know what you represent, and you're not fooling God. Amen. You have to show them why we are different from all the rest. Yes, there's those out there that are reaching young people through entertainment. But that's all they have is entertainment. They're bringing them in with music and hoopla and entertaining them. Showing them stuff on the big screens. Amen. But I want them to not only come for entertainment. I want them to come and be drawn by the truth. I want them to be drawn by the word of God. Amen. Don't get me wrong, young people. Don't get me wrong. Entertainment has its place. Fun has its place. Me, of all people, know I'm the biggest kid there is out there. Amen. I'm the biggest kid. I like having fun. I like going out playing basketball. I need to do a little bit more of it. Amen. I love to have fun. But I want to be more than just a fun-loving youth leader. I want to be a, the youth leader that leads by example. 
there's a point to where I can be y'all's friend, young people, and there's a point to where I have to not be your friend. Amen. And that's something that God has been working with me on. Because, yes, I have been y'all's friend. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's not doing y'all a service and it's not doing y'all a justice. I'm not doing y'all a service as your youth leader. There's going to be times I'm going to be harsh with y'all. There's going to be times I'm going to be rough on the edges with y'all. That's because I'm not going to allow this world to grab a hold of you because that's what they're going to do. They're going to throw paint a pretty picture. And I'm going to have to be rough with y'all and sometimes not be your friend. Amen. When I ask you to do something, that, and, and it's, it's, when I ask you all to do it, young people, it's not something that I'm not willing to do myself. I make sacrifices just like everybody else has to make sacrifices. I know sometimes y'all don't like giving up y'all Saturday days to go do a car wash. I don't like giving up my time with my children, but I make the sacrifices. I'm willing to do whatever it is to do for y'all to be saved. That's my vision. I want to see all of y'all saved. I want to see these pews filled with young people, but I can't do it on my own. I got to have y'all share that same vision with me. Hallelujah. I got to get y'all. Y'all need to buy into this. I can't do it on my own. I'm one person. I need y'all's help. But y'all got to have that vision for yourself. I want to reach the youth of this town. I want to reach the youth of this county. There's no reason why we, this church and these pews can't be filled with young people. Amen. Young people, I've told y'all many, many times before, y'all are the generation of now. The elders of this church ain't going to be here for a lifetime. They're not always going to be here to show you the way. You have to get that vision for yourself. God has a vision for you. Otherwise, y'all wouldn't be here tonight. God has something for y'all, young people. Otherwise, y'all wouldn't be here tonight. And the same goes for the church. God has a vision for this church. A vision long, long time ago that was prophesied in tongues and interpretation when he said he had bound the strong men of this city. We have not fulfilled that vision yet, church. The strong man has been bound, but we have not allowed the chains to fall down off of us. I said the strong man has been bound, but our chains haven't fallen off yet. We haven't fulfilled that vision if we had, this place would be packed out. Standing room only. We all have visions and dreams of what we want to do in our lives and how our lives should end up. Especially young people. Once y'all get around y'all's high school years and y'all start getting to you all senior year, last year of school, you have an idea and a vision of what you want to do in life. Ever since I was five years old, I've always wanted to be a cop. Ask my mom. I wanted to be a Texas Ranger or a U.S. Marshal. Haven't made it that far. I did make it, though, to being a cop. My dream. Though I'm not doing it right now, I still strive to do it. Because in that vision, I feel I could reach people. Because in that field, you run into lost souls. You run into the rough of the rough, the dirtiest of the dirtiest, the nastiest of the nastiest. But it's how you handle that. 
and handle them. And if I could just reach in and if I could give them a word, even if it is a short trip to the jail when I arrest them, if I could just give them a word and show them that there's another way, there's another path for them, that all is not lost yet, there's still hope. Without hope, there's nothing. Without hope, you just sit in a gutter. Amen. Without hope, the suicide rate goes up. I don't think it's real. It's real. And it's not just happening to normal people. Celebrities are committing suicide left and right. Just because they're making millions and millions of dollars don't mean that they're not facing things. Hey, Amen. Don't mean that they don't get depressed. They're just like any other normal person. They're just like you and I. Hey, Amen. God has given us a vision, but if you don't heed to that vision or to that call on your life, it will dry up, young people. If you don't heed to it, if you don't grasp a hold of it, it will only be there for so long. And God will give that vision to somebody else who's more hungrier. He'll give that vision to somebody else who's more hungrier and has more of a passion that wants to reach lost souls, that wants to see change. Amen. Without a vision, without the vision of our forefathers, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, without their vision, we wouldn't have the United States of America today. Yeah, this world is bad, but we still have our freedom right now. And without them men, them great men, we would not have that freedom. We would still be under rule of a British government. We'd still be under rule of somebody forcing us to do what they want. Amen. Without the vision of Dr. Martin Luther King, we wouldn't enjoy the things we have right here. Different nationalities, different races worshiping God together in one accord, in one mind. Without the vision of Dr. Luther King, we would still be living in a segregated state, in a segregated world. And we would not know the privilege of worshiping with different nationalities of the same belief. Without the vision of Peter, Paul, and John and other disciples... We wouldn't have the beginnings of Pentecost. We wouldn't have had and heard of the upper room experience. Amen. I want to see another upper room experience in this city. I want to see it where they call the fire department because it looks like there's a fire on top of this church. It can happen. Amen. That's not just something that was for them. It's, we can have it tonight. We can have it at this moment. All you have to do is believe and have that vision. Without the likes of Brother William Seymour, who in 1906 made his way to Los Angeles and started a revival at 312 Azusa Street that lasted until 1915. From 1906 to 1915, the revival on Azusa Street. We possibly wouldn't have the breakout of Pentecostalism that we have today this church probably would cease to exist without his vision. Without the vision of dedicated saints like Mary Patterson and Clara Fisher that got up early in the mornings and begged on us to keep these church doors open, this church possibly wouldn't be here. But they had a vision. And they, through their life, seen that vision grow. But we need to carry on that vision. I said we need to carry on that vision that they had. The passion that they had. 
the love that they had. He said earlier, the church has been promised that the strong man of the city was bound. But have we, we have yet to really grasp a hold of that vision. If we were able to grab a hold of that vision and the true power of that vision, the city would be turned upside down from left to right, forwards and backwards. And there would be a great revival like never before seen in this city. I believe that if we could grasp a hold of the vision that God has for this church. There's no reason that we can affect this city. There's no reason that we can affect this county. There's no reason that we can affect this world. There's no reason why 1416 North Alabama Road, Peace Tabernacle, can't be the next 312 Azusa Street revival. Without a vision, it won't happen. But with a vision, we can shake the foundations of this world. We can shake the foundations of everything that the devil has thrown at us. Everything that the devil don't want us to succeed at. But you got to have a vision. What is your vision for this city, young people? What is your vision for this city? Saints, what is your vision for this church? Are you willing to make the sacrifices it takes to fulfill those visions that have been set before us? See, because you can't just survive on a feel-good message. There's a lot of preachers out there that are just giving feel-good messages to make you feel better about yourself. But it's more to it than that. You must be willing to be broken. You must be willing to be molded. You must be like clay in a potter's hand that it's molded to the form that God wants you to be. We can't allow ourselves to be persuaded by the message that isn't truth. And just because you grew up in this don't mean you can't be persuaded by the outside message. We can't allow for the things of this world to destroy or take away from that vision. Amen. We need not to be ashamed of our vision. The vision of a loved one saved. How many have loved ones here that need to be saved? That are lost? That are looking for an answer? Amen. Amen. We can't allow that vision to be destroyed. The vision of friends coming in and receiving the Holy Ghost. Young people, we all have our friends in school that are hungry. They're searching for something. And just because they're young don't mean that they're not hungry. There's a hunger there. They're looking for something to fulfill them. Something that lets the cup runneth over. And never dries up. It's always fulfilling. It always quenches that thirst. Without a vision, how can we fulfill the commission of building up God's kingdom? How can we expect a growth if we don't believe in the vision ourselves? Just because you get a vision don't mean that it's going to come to fruition. You have to believe in the vision that you've been given we have to believe in the vision that this church has been given it's one thing to come sit down on these pews and say it it's another thing to get out in the world and do it hey man nike has a slogan that says just do it that's what we ought to be doing we ought to just do it stop second guessing ourselves Stop worrying about what they're going to say about you or if they're going to make fun of you because you're going to get made fun of. It's life. People constantly make fun of you. 
But there are people out there that are looking for something to fill the void. Like I said, the feel-good message ain't going to do it. It only lasts temporarily. I said a feel-good message only lasts temporarily. It's only a temporarily fix. If you talk to anybody who's ever done drugs, they'll tell you it's just a temporary fix to what they were looking for, to a hunger that they were looking for. And they constantly do it because they get that temporary fix. But then they wake up the next morning and they're feeling empty again. Let me tell you, church, I know a God... I said, I know a God who don't work in temporary fixes. I know a God that fills you full, and when you wake up the next morning, you're still full. You're not hungry. You're not searching for nothing. Amen. The darkest time in the history of Israel had been when there was no open vision. 1 Samuel 3 and 1 says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days, because there was no open vision. At such a time, without an open vision, people perish, are let loose, are left to run wild. And when left to run wild and do anything, people and nations will destroy each other. Nations will fall. People will fall. They will turn on each other. And we are slowly becoming a society that has no vision. We are slowly becoming a society that is turning on each other. We're slowly destroying ourselves because there's no straight vision. Just as Nikita Khrushchev stated a long time ago about destroying the USA without firing a shot. It's happening. Things that are being allowed in society, things that are being allowed into our school systems, things that are being allowed throughout this world it's taking a place where not just the U.S. is destroying itself but other nations are destroying themselves and all you have to do is just look out the window and see it everyday life presents it amen I knew I wasn't going to be very long tonight I'll be com- I'm coming to a close. Musician, if you would come. You see, it, it, it took it took Jonah being swallowed by a well before he got a hold of the vision that God wanted for him and for the city of Nineveh. And once he was inside the belly of the well. He knew that vision. He saw that vision. And once he was released, there was a move in the city of Nineveh. It's the same move that God wants us to have. Maybe not be swallowed by a well, but maybe we have to be swallowed by a spiritual well in order for us to receive the vision for this city. It took the servant of Elijah seven times before he finally saw a cloud. Before he got a vision of a cloud. And Elijah said, hey, get your running shoes on, boy. There's an abundance of rain coming. There's a spiritual cloud that God has for this church. There's a mighty rain that God has for this church. We've seen this song about of rain. Lord, just let that rain fall. Open the floodgates of heaven. He's willing to open the floodgates of heaven, but are we willing to receive 
that rain. Are we really need to see that refreshing rain? So as I open up the altars tonight, I ask you, are you at that place where you can make a difference and change in others' lives? I ask, where is your vision that you've been promised? Are you holding on strong to it? Or is it lying in a spiritual gutter being washed away? Where is the fire? So where is the fire that you had when you first came into this? Have you put it on a back burner and letting it simmer and not fully grasping a hold of that fire? Because when you first came into this, you were on fire for God. Nothing could stop you. Nothing could get in your way. Where is that vision that you had when you first made your way to an altar? When you first knelt at an altar? When you first felt God touch your life? Where is that same fire for others to be saved? Is your vision, has you allowed your vision to grow lukewarm and cold? Have we as a church, as a church allowed for the vision to become lukewarm and cold? Because you see, where there is no vision, people perish. Where there is no vision, promises perish. We've all had promises to us of our loved ones. But without a vision, those promises perish. Without a vision, friends perish. Without a vision, your walk with God will perish. Without a vision, this church will perish. We are approaching the last days, church. And without a vision, where will you stand? Without a vision, where will your life be? Because you can't straddle the fence, church. You can't straddle the fence, young person. You're either going to be on one side or you're going to be on the other. You can't play for both teams. You can't play for the church and you can't play for the world. Have you been coming to church, young person, with nothing to show? I said, have you been coming to church with nothing to show but the impression on the pew where you sit? Have you just sat for so long in a pew, young person? At a church, have you just sat in a pew for so long that all there is when you get up is an impression of where you sit at? Have you made an impact? Have you made the impact that you can? So where is your vision? I ask you, where is your vision, church? Young person, have you tucked it away and forgot about it? Put it in a corner? Put it in a suitcase and put it away in your closet? Have you allowed yourself to become distracted by the things of this world? See, I was prepared to have some shoes out here. And I was going to set them shoes on the altar. But I don't really need the physical shoes. They could be spiritual shoes of the elders from before. The elders that have gone before us of the Clara Fishers of the Mary Pattersons 
of the Orton Dorothy Ewens, of the Frank Stains, of all those others that have gone before us. Their spiritual shoes are right here, church. They're waiting to be filled by us. They're waiting for that vision to be fulfilled by us. The vision is still there that they have. But are we willing to fill them shoes? Are we willing to literally step out up here to an altar and make our way to an altar and fill these shoes? Are you just going to want to sit there on a pew and and let that vision fall away and let that vision fade away? Are we going to allow for that vision to perish? We have a choice. So we have a choice. The spiritual shoes of the elders are right there waiting to be filled. But I ask, who is ready to take that stand? Who is willing to come forth and fill them shoes? said to be not ashamed for God is not mocked that whatsoever a man soweth that shall he reap have we really reaped the harvest have we done all that we could do to make that difference to fulfill that vision. Oh, hallelujah. Have we really given ourselves away? Have we really bought into it, into the vision of God, to where our life is not our own? To God that we belong, Have we just really given ourselves away to what God wants for us? Can I open up these altars for anybody who who is searching for something, who, who wants to see their vision fulfilled? Who's wanting to fill the spiritual shoes left by the elders? You see, God has a work for this church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Who's willing to go? Who shall he send? Who will answer the call? Here I am, Lord. Send me, Lord. Choose me, Lord. Lord, I give myself away to you, God. Hallelujah, 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 mighty God. Give myself. 